Michael Burry, the founder of Cyan Asset Management, was made famous by Christian Bale in the movie The Big Short. He has been active on Twitter once again, and Michael Burry is known for correctly predicting market events, especially the housing crash in 08, and he keeps working on his track record of spotting macro patterns and predicting macro events correctly. On Thursday, he made yet another major prediction on Twitter. And as always, he promptly deleted that tweet a few hours later. So in this video, I want to discuss what exactly Burry is actually predicting, especially for the second half of this year. And by looking at some historical precedents, I'll examine whether he has a point. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, hey there, my name is René Zolman and there are actually two parts of Barry Street that I want to unwrap in this video. And towards the end of the video, I will actually outline a bear market theory that may give you some hints where we are heading. So let's start with the facts that Michael Burry stated. Adjusted for inflation, 2022 first half S&P 500 down 25 to 26% and Nasdaq down 34 to 35%. Bitcoin down 64 to 65%, that was multiple compression. And yeah, as I said, Michael Burry is mainly stating some well-known facts here. In fact, the Nasdaq has experienced its worst decline since the great financial crisis in 2008, and the S&P 500 actually suffered its worst first half since 1970. Although to be fair, the poor performance of stocks during the first six months of this year this performance doesn't tell you anything about the expected future perform performance during the next six months, as the investors from Ensemble Capital rightly pointed out. As you read articles this weekend about how the first half of 2022 is the worst start to the year since 1970, keep in mind that in the second half of 1970, the market rallied 29% to finish the year up 4%. This isn't a prediction, just an observation. Now, to get back to Burry's tweet, he also said that this decline was caused by multiple compression. And I would assume that not everyone is familiar with this term. Well, Burry is referring to valuation multiples here, and some common valuation multiples that you may have heard of are, for example, price to earnings, price to revenue, or price to book value. So for example, if a company generates 10,000 US dollars in annual profits and its market cap is currently 100,000 US dollars, it rates at a PE, so price to earnings ratio of 10. Multiple compression takes place when the multiple falls. So if, for instance, the market cap of this business declines to 60,000 US dollars, well, then the stock of that business not rates at a PE multiple of six, and a multiple compression took place. Now, this is just a fictional example, right? So let's look at the actual PE multiple of the 500 biggest companies in the United States. Right here, you can see the Schiller PE ratio, also known as the cyclically adjusted PE ratio or CAPE ratio of the S&P 500. And as you can see, the multiple has come down, but is by no means close to its historical average, which, which is around 17. Now the Schiller PE ratio is based on average inflation adjusted earnings from the previous 10 years. If we now look at the price to earnings ratio that is based on just the last 12 months of earnings, things look a little better. But Burry may have a point that the current bear market still has ways to run as the current PE multiple of the S&P 500 is still relatively high. And this brings us to the second part of Michael Burry's tweet. That was multiple compression. Next up, earnings compression. So maybe halfway there. So what Michael Burry is hinting at is that the second half of this year may turn out to be just as ugly as the first half of this year. And to understand this and the point he's making, you need to acknowledge that there are two components to the PE ratio. The multiple compression that we have just talked about was caused by the P in that multiple. Prices of stocks have come down significantly. But what about the E? Earnings. Let's take another look at, at the S&P 500 PE ratio chart. As you might notice, in 2008 and 2009, the S&P PE ratio went literally off the charts at least by the standard of any prior experience. 
Starting in October 2008, the multiple literally exploded and went all the way up to 123 in May 2009 before it came down back down to earth in December 2009. And as you all know, the PE multiple didn't go up because the assets, so the companies, were particularly expensive during the financial crisis. No, in fact, the stock market bottomed on March 9, 2009, but the stocks still appeared expensive on a trailing 12 month PE basis because their earnings, so the denominator of the PE ratio formula, the earnings had fallen to yeah, a point where there were almost no earnings. And so what Burry is predicting here is that we may see a similar earnings revision in 2022 and maybe also in 2023. In fact, there are already many signs that the economy may be faltering. Many companies are experiencing slowing growth and we're even witnessing higher increases at major companies such as Facebook, Wayfair or Twitter and layoffs at companies such as Netflix or Klarna. Just a few days ago, an internal memo from Facebook was actually leaked and in it Mark Zuckerberg said the following. If I had to bet, I would say that this might be one of the worst downturns that we have seen in recent history. And Reuters reported that product officer Chris Cox wrote in an internal memo that the company must prioritize more ruthlessly and operate leaner, meaner and better executing teams. So overall, I think Michael Burry shares the sentiment that Stanley Druckmiller has also recently expressed. I've discussed what exactly Druckmiller has said in another video and in it I shared this so-called two-thirds, one-third rule. According to this rule, about one-third of a stock market's decline during a bear market occurs in the first two-thirds of a bear market's duration. And then about two-thirds of that decline occurs in the final one-third. And this was the case in the bear market of 1973 and a similar phenomenon could actually be observed during the decline of the great financial crisis. So whether Michael Burry and Chuck Miller are having the right instinct here remains to be seen. If you want to learn more about what Stanley Druckmiller is expecting and predicting, I recommend you watch the following video next. Take care.